Let's go. Come on. Don't turn right. Oh, <laughs> no. 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 See you in an hour. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the UPS. It's finally here. Check her out. Finally got it. There we are. Oh, look at that meat stick. Damn. Oh, we're putting that on the back of the taco. Jeez, those things are beefy. That's a thick boy, dude. Look at that. It's gonna go on there. Check her out. Full Fox suspension. Full Kings, dude. <laughs> Looking good. Oh, man. <whistles> Bushings. Dang, Gina. Jeez. Man. The rear suspension's getting rutted. <laughs> All right. So this was a big dilemma for me because I was going to do the uh, one and a half inch block, but... Ended up going with the uh, Adelief here. Well, I guess it's the three pack Adelief. Go ahead and pull her out here. There we oh, go. Oh, turns out they did send them. That's good. Heck Ooh, yeah. Hey, these are clean. Some people are complaining about paint chipping and all that stuff, but these look pretty clean. They don't look too half bad, so those look nice. You can see they got three leaves, one, two, three. And then the our normal leaf spring will sit on here, and then that's how you tighten them on. Bunch of hardware. Now let's go do some installing. What is up, everyone? This is a 2018 Toyota Tacoma, and we're going to be moving the co removing the coilover right here. So it's pretty simple. I did the other side but um, I got all the tools, so it's gonna look like we're doing it pretty quick, but if it's your first time, it might take a little bit longer. First things first is a Sharpie. So what I would go ahead and do is mark. Um, you can either mark going in this direction, but for me, I just mark the uh, vertical line right here because when I start loosening this, all this is gonna move, and then I kinda wanna put it back into that position so when I get a wheel alignment, at least it's not totally screwed up. I'm gonna do that on the other side as well here. Just go in the vertical, vertical line. And you just want these loose. You don't wanna take them off. Oh yeah, those are really on there. It's really free once we start working on everything here. So you can see everything's moving now. See, now it's pretty loose, so I think we're good there. That is also a 22 millimeter socket. Can go ahead and loosen our 19 millimeter bolt here for the bottom of our shock. I already loosened that one. We want to take this one all the way off this time. Take the washer off, put that to the side. And then on top here, we've got ourselves a 14 millimeter socket. And then there's three bolts holding this thing down. And then once you break them loose, these actually come loose by hand a little bit. And to keep the pressure off of those nuts up top and on the bottom here, I'm gonna go ahead and just give myself a little bit of pressure here. 
just to take the whole pressure off because everything's just pulling it down. So I'll take the pressure off once we start loosening all the bolts here. See, now you can just loosen them by hand instead of the whole shock just slowly falling down. This one is the rear one back here. Now we gotta take out the lower bolt here. Might need a little bit of work. There we go. Yours might be more stuck than that, but this thing only has 19,000 miles on it, so everything is pretty good and I take good care of it, so. Um, last thing to get the lower control arm to drop is these two bolts down here. I believe they are 19 millimeters. Yep, and you're gonna definitely have to use a breaker bar here. Right here, there's two of them on each side. This is what connects the lower control arm to the bottom of your disc right here. Just break them loose. some movie action here. Make this thing go a little bit faster. Uh, yeah, that's loose. There you go, there's one of them. And then the other one's up front here. There's a second one, so the lower control arm is completely free. I just need to remove the jack here. So hold your shock mount, and then the lower control arm just drops. And then you can pull your coil over out nice and easy here. Just wiggle it out. And boom, just like that, you're ready to put your new coil over in. So with the Bilstein 6112s, you have a spring, and then you also have your dampener, but it doesn't come with the cap on the top. You have to use your OEM cap, which actually I really like because it has the original damping. You're not metal to metal on the top of your um, frame. And so it's actually pretty nice, but the, pain, the painful part is taking this damn spring off. So what you're gonna have to do is use some sort of spring compressor. Um, people use the, the truck. We tried to use that last night, but for some reason this part wouldn't really come off. So we ended up having to use this good old spring compressor or you can go to a shop and have it done. But we're just gonna go ahead and do it the old fashioned way here. Get these threaded in here. Good. You always want to be careful. I wouldn't want to be in the direction. Um, if it were to ever shoot out, it's going to either push out this direction or push out this direction. So I don't really want to stand in that direction. So I'll just stand on top of it here. Get a little bit more torqued. Thank you. 
So once you've got the spring compressed, I would recommend using some sort of drill here to get this nut off. Boom, there we go. We got her off. All right, so we're putting the Bilstein 6112s in. I cleaned up my cap. The uh, front here for us had the uh, numbers SBR plus 9R. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back into here. Just loosely tighten these nuts on top. I'm gonna torque these to spec later but I can't use that compression or the spring compressor because the coil spring is so close to the dampener that the compression spring is uh, touching the dampener. So let me show you. Um, I, on the Bill C and 6112s, I've got five on the driver's side and then four on the passenger side. And then you wanna make sure you have this right direction. This is the wrong direction. You can see there's a little cut in here. And then you wanna slide it in. And it's gonna sit perfectly on that ring so you don't see the ring anymore. Go ahead and get your spring here. Set it on. I would just make sure you can see Bilstein in the right direction. And then um, orient it the way you want. I kinda of wanna see the Bilstein um, logo up here. So we have this little um, spacer. You can see one side has an extrusion down here. Put the extrusion down. And then also with the washer, the smaller washer of the two, you want the concave facing up, just like that. And then now we're good. So let's go ahead and set that in here. Wiggle it through. I'm gonna have to come on this side. And easy. Try not to scratch my new spring. We're looking pretty good here. Set that in there. Get our spring, get our bolt in here. Might need a little bit of help <laughs> real quick. You wanna lift the shock up. There we go. And then just make sure this top part I want to have it say Bilstein so you can see I've repped the Bilstein gang. Looks pretty good there. Just kind of want to start lining everything up here. Get everything out of the way. And then we're going to go ahead and use our shock here. Or our jack to push everything up. There we go. Just watch it. All right, hold on a second. So you kind of have to find the hole here for the top of the shock mount to let that uh, bill stain go all the way through the top of the tower. Good. Stop. Okay. So we got my buddy Luke here moving the jack up and it's compressing the spring and you can see it's starting to come all the way through. 
All right, so we got our jack stand here pushing up on our lower control arm. We can go ahead and use the bushing on top. And then you want your washer here. So it's concave down, facing like that. And you can put your nut on top. And boom. Tighten her up. And the manual says 20 foot pounds of torque on this thing. So torque that to spec here. Um, I don't have a special tool that will be able to torque up here. But what I am going to do is you will feel it really start um, tightening up because right now what we're doing is we're pulling the dampener all the way up to that um, big spacer. And once it hits that spacer, this will get really tight and I'm just gonna go a little bit further to get it nice and snug. 20 foot pounds is not a lot of torque. So just keep that in mind. You don't wanna over torque this and torque this bushing down too hard. And then another thing is by eye, um, maybe about a quarter an in inch of thread should be good here. But I will be torquing everything else to spec. So yeah, right there I kind of felt it kind of hit that spacer. So I'm just going to go a little bit more. And yeah, that's about 20 foot pounds. I don't want to... Uh, tighten that up too much there so that looks good now it can decompress everything and torque it to spec you can stop all right so use your 14 millimeter socket and torque these three up top at 20 newton meters uh took a little bit of wiggling up there with the torque wrench but i ended up getting it so i already did that um the next thing is to get our full suspension back together here Fifty-two foot pounds. You got your washer and your nut. All right, got a nineteen millimeter socket. I'm gonna torque it to sixty-one foot pounds. All right, 22 millimeter socket, 100 foot pounds. Looks good. And I also have my mark up there pointing straight up. And then you wanna do that on the other side as well. Now that wraps up the front suspension. We're gonna move and do the rear suspension. I did this over one day, so I was pretty exhausted. The rear suspension is a little bit easier, so I skipped a couple steps, but I do walk through it in the video. So keep on watching. Thank you. All right, so for the rear leaf spring, what you wanna do right here is cut the bottom bolt. This thing will pop off. It's a little bit of pain in the butt. And then I already took off the U-brackets, but it's pretty easy, you just pop them off. And then on the top right here, there's a 14 millimeter nut, just pull it off and it comes all off. Take out your OEM. Out of leaf, and then I'm putting in the new icon three piece, one and a half inch lift right here. This is going to slide in right there through those bolts, and it's not too shabby. Uh, probably more. One second, stop there. Let's see. Now the key to success right here is to have a jack underneath your axle and then have a jack that is holding up your frame so then you can move 
one up or one down so you can move the leaf springs up and down and it's a little bit of a tedi tedious process but it is pretty smooth some other people recommend having C clamps right here so the leaf springs are not spread apart but I did not have an issue wiggling them together and I actually made it really nice to have them apart because when I was threading the bolt through I could look at each individual individual one and make sure it was going through completely so it actually worked out very smoothly so we got these all tightened down we got to tighten down a little bit more but and then we uh, had the screw go all the way through we cut it off now our bump stop can fit on here. We'll put our U-joints down and then tighten it back down. What I'd recommend doing is getting your 24 mil and just lining everything up, making sure your U brackets yeah. are yeah, all tight. U bolts are all tight. And and make sure this plate is level here. Not U joints. Okay, so you can put this black washer in. Then you put the bushing, then you put the thinner washer, your strut tower, put another bushing in, then your last heavier washer, then you throw the nut on top. You want to push up even weight, so nice and slow, and then get it in there. It should compress. And then theoretically, this is going to go through nice and smooth. For the lower shock tower, you want to use 74 foot pounds. And for the U bolt nuts, you want to use 37 foot pounds. For the top strut tower bolt, you want to use a 15 foot pound torque to torque it in a spec. And then for um, the reservoir, they tell you to mount it over here with a, a little piece of metal on the back so you have a back plate and it mounts way up front. But I think it looks way cooler right over here. So I mounted it right on top of the frame. I had to drill two holes and then mount this. And then I had to actually have it pointing straight up because it actually was originally pointing out. And when I was full stuff, it was really close to the tire so it wasn't that comfortable. So I ended up just pointing it straight up. It still looks really good.